Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Ratta, and I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is based on a poll that I did on Instagram. So the question I asked was, how many of you know the difference between mineral and chemical sunscreens? And the vast majority said that they didn't know the difference. And I thought, actually, this is quite an important video to do because you need to be educated and empowered in order to figure out which sunscreens are best for you. So today we are going to be doing a deep dive into the difference between chemical versus mineral or physical sunscreen. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. Okay, so we broadly categorize sunscreen into two different categories, organic, also known as chemical sunscreens, and inorganic, also known as mineral sunscreens or physical sunscreens. So all these different names don't help the situation. Today, we're just going to call it chemical versus mineral sunscreen, just to make everyone's life a little bit easier. When we talk about mineral sunscreens, we're talking about zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Those are the two mineral sunscreens that filters that we're talking about. With chemical filters, they tend to be all the long names. So avabenzone, for example. So I'll go through a few more of them a bit later on. But when it comes to sunscreens on the market, they can either be purely mineral, purely chemical, or a combination. The confusion happens when it's a combination and then they write on the front mineral sunscreen, but actually it's a combination of the two, which is why it's really important that you guys are empowered in order to be able to turn the back of your sunscreen and look at the inky list, that's the ingredients list, I-N-C-I list, in order to figure out exactly what ingredients are being put into your sunscreen. Now, the early skin uh, sunscreen papers used to say that UV is reflected for mineral sunscreens or physical sunscreens like a mirror and for chemical sunscreens they are absorbed into the skin and turned to heat. Now these earlier sunscreen papers really did wreak havoc with the skincare community because we were all reading those papers and just communicating what we we're reading in these clinical papers but actually as science evolved, we learned actually that's not how these filters are working. They actually work in quite a similar way. There's not a huge amount of difference in the, their mechanism of action. So they both actually do um, primarily absorb um, UV and convert it to heat. One of the key differences is that with physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens, i.e. zinc oxide, 5 to 10% is reflected. So that's the mechanism difference. But actually, they're quite similar in terms of the way that they work. And then to make the matters even worse and even more confusing, we have a new brand of chemical filters, for example, Tinosorb M. Now, Tinosorb works in a very similar way to mineral sunscreens, even though that they're chemical filters. So it's almost like a new branch of chemical filters. We call it particulate organic sunscreens, these new chemical filters. So in the whole confusion of chemical versus mineral, and now we have chemical filters, the new ones that behave like mineral filters, Dr. B, which ones are we supposed to use? So I go back to basics and I look at my criteria. My criteria for sunscreens I recommend for myself and for my loved ones are SPF 50 minimum, that's maximum UVB protection. I look for PA with four pluses. So that is your maximum UVA protection. This way I know is broad spectrum. Don't forget the SPF rating doesn't tell you a thing about UVA. It only talks about UVB. That's what SPF is um, assessing. You need to look at the star rating or the plus rating in order to see how protected you are against UVA rays. Don't forget, UVA leads to aging, UVB leads to burning, they both lead to cancer. So we want to protect our skin from both rays. I also ideally want a sunscreen that has no white cast because honestly, if you've got white cast on your face, you might not like it and you're unlikely to reapply it. And if that happens, you are now exposed and vulnerable. 
So the number one thing really has to be, you know, after are you protected? Is does it have a white cast? Do you enjoy the feel of the product on the skin? So that's really key. Then the next thing I look for is is it NAF safe? That means no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, and no essential oils. Denatured alcohol leads to drying of the skin, which I certainly don't want during the day when UV is hitting the face. Fragrance leads as a number one cause of contact dermatitis, and essential oils sensitize the skin. So I always look for sunscreens that are NAF safe and don't contain those three categories of ingredients. The next thing I look for is the texture. So, for example, with mineral sunscreen, sometimes it can feel chalky on the skin, and I enjoy wearing makeup right now. I'm wearing makeup, and I do want to have a smooth finish or a dewy finish or something that's easy for me to slip my makeup on top of and will settle and set so that you know it doesn't move all day long. That's really important for me. I like to have a sunscreen that almost behaves like a primer. I also like to use sunscreens that have UV stable actives during the day. So things like niacinamide are great. It's great for sebum control, great for acne, uh, great for pigmentation. In fact, I did actually put um, niacinamide into Inzincable for that reason. I also like derivatives of vitamin C because again it's a very good antioxidant but I wouldn't recommend ascorbic acid because it has a low pH and I wouldn't want you to put an acid on the face that could be a little bit irritating and then go out into the sun. It doesn't make any sense. Stick with your niacinamide uh, or UV stable tyrosinase inhibitors. So for example we did use Melashield in Inzincable which is a trademark complex. It's actually a tyrosinase inhibitor stem cell which reduces pigmentation throughout the day, but it doesn't irritate the skin when UV is hitting the, the skin, which is important. So if you have pigmentation, for example, you you are probably going to want a UV-stable tyrosinase inhibitor to combat the pigmentation throughout the day because the vast majority of tyrosinase inhibitors you can only wear at nighttime. So I look for that because I get melasma. Now, whether you choose a chemical versus a mineral sunscreen, make sure you like it because if you don't like it, you're not going to wear it. So that's number one. It doesn't matter whether you choose mineral over chemical. That that's your personal choice as long as you pick one and you are religious about applying it. So for me, I prefer mineral sunscreen. One of the reasons being that zinc oxide doesn't enter the bloodstream, neither uh, neither does um, nano zinc oxide. So no form of zinc oxide enters the bloodstream. It sits on the top layer of skin and this means it doesn't go into the dermis, into the bloodstream. It doesn't enter the urine and breast milk, unlike chemical filters. There haven't been enough long-term studies on the effects of chemical filters in the bloodstream so this is why I, for my loved ones and my children, I would always put physical sunscreens on them or mineral sunscreens on them. And this is my global skin and colour family, so I'm going to recommend to you what I would do for my own children. So that's why I recommend it. It's also the reason why we say to pregnant ladies to wear mineral sunscreen over chemical sunscreen. I also know that zinc oxide is UV stable. So unlike a lot of the chemical filters, such as avabenzone and octinoxate, are both UV unstable. So photostability for me is key with sunscreen. Uh, today I've just filmed a video for you on my top three mineral sunscreens with no white cast for skin of color. So do make sure you head over and check out that video. Can you write down below your favorite sunscreens that leave you with no white cast as well? Can you tell me what other videos you want me to make for you? Cause I'm really getting through that list that you sent me quite rapidly. <laughs> Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Dr. Benita Rattan and Skincare by Dr. V. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok, Dr. Benita Rattan. And and also, I've now created a Dr. V Inky Hacker group on Facebook, which is a private group. You do have to answer some questions in order to get into the group. But I want to create a safe space for our skin of color community to discuss skincare issues. It's a place where there's no judgment. It's a place that I try and answer as many questions as possible. You can send me photos. You can send me your skincare routine. And we can all chime in. You know, I was thinking we've had over 25 million views of this channel in the last 12 months you know there's so many of us that are able to help each other and create this safe community which is really one of my aims of my life is is to do this so please do join um and i will see you for the next video thank you so much bye